My name is John Cornelius, and I was invited to do a short video introduction to my article titled, The Hippocampus Facilitates Integration Within a Symbolic Field, that was recently accepted for publication in an upcoming volume of the International Journal for Psychoanalysis. The paper attempts to integrate theories of psychic spaces, as explored by Donald Winnicott and Wilfred Beyond, with the neuroscientific examination of those with bilateral hippocampal injury to show how evidence from both disciplines elaborates a fundamental brain mechanism involved in the creation and maintenance of symbolic fields of thought. Possibly originating as a way of maintaining an oriented first-person psychic map, this capacity allows individuals a dynamic narrative access to a realm of layered elements in their connections where everything in the field has nuanced meaning primarily through dynamic symbolic relationships within the field itself. If the proposed hypothesis is correct, the hippocampus facilitates the integration of this symbolic field of mind where narrative forms of thinking, creativity, memory, and dreaming are intertwined. The paper presents dramatic evidence of this symbolic field of thought through the study of those with bilateral hippocampal injury demonstrating how those with this injury seem unable to symbolize their own experience. Without this function, evidence is presented of an inability to engage in many typical forms of thought itself, including the fundamental ability to remember or even think about one's life, engage one's imagination, use creativity to solve problems, or even experience an integrated dream in the Bionian sense of dreaming. However, while the dramatic power of this paper is related to the evidence of impairment in those with permanent bilateral hippocampal injury, the deeper relevance to psychoanalysis is underscored by evidence of temporal alterations of hippocampal function that are detected in those who experience trauma, have fluctuations in moods, engage in certain kinds of concentration, or even those who listen to sad or happy music. The possibility that the human capacity to remember, imagine, think, or dream fluctuates in direct relation to subtle variables during the psychoanalytic hour make the study of hippocampal function directly relevant to psychoanalytic theory and technique. For example, Beyond's famous reference to intercessions without memory or desire might be implicitly referencing the need to attend to and engage this symbolic aspect of mind. In addition, by noting how other mental capacities persist despite hippocampal impairment demonstrates how these other aspects of mind exist outside the symbolic field, capacities that are often nearly invisible when this symbolic function is present. This evidence hints at other forms of thinking that also have direct clinical and theoretical relevance to psychoanalysis, such as ideas related to beta elements, but adds interesting nuances to the concept including evidence of alternate forms of learning from experience that appear independent of symbolic function. I am hoping the readers might recognize how this paper, while quite broad and speculative in scope, might continue a valuable conversation about this important aspect of mind. I encourage anyone who has any questions to please contact me via email at thorcornelius at gmail.com.